So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to install Windows 10 or any version of Windows in a hypervisor, specifically VMware Workstation Player. Not to be confused with VMware Workstation, this is VMware Workstation Player. Now VMware Workstation Player is actually free as long as you're not using it for business purposes. And in my opinion, it is the single best desktop hypervisor available. Yes, everybody is aware of and has used VirtualBox. And don't get me wrong, VirtualBox is great. It's in all the default package repositories and it's very well supported and everything. But the bottom line is that as far as performance goes, it's not very good. In fact, it can't even accelerate 3D graphics. Now VMware Player, on the other hand, can. Now before we dive into installing VMware Workstation Player, you need to make sure that your processor is compatible. Now there's a lot of different virtualization technologies built into your processor, and if you're using a newer AMD chip, you should be fine because pretty much all AMD processors come with all of the virtualization technologies enabled. Intel, on the other hand, especially if you have a low-end Intel chip, your virtualization technologies may not be enabled, and to compound this issue even further, a lot of motherboards actually disable virtualization technologies and you cannot re-enable them from the BIOS. So if you're using AMD, you should be good to go, but if you're using Intel, uh, you might want to do a little research on your processor and make sure that it is virtualization and hypervisor ready. Now, like with any hypervisor, you need to make sure that you have a fair amount of memory. And if you plan on playing games, you need to make sure that you have a lot of memory because you need to dedicate some of your memory to your GPU. Eight gigabytes of memory is probably enough, but the more you have, the better. Now the other stuff is pretty standard. You gotta make sure that you have decent display adapter. You gotta make sure you have the hard drive space and everything like that. So installing VMware Workstation Player is actually easier said than done. VMware Workstation Player is proprietary software, so you're probably not going to find it in any of your package repositories, except for maybe the AUR. So you'll have to go to VMware's website and download it. So as of this video, it's going to be 12.5.1, I believe. So let's go ahead and download it. So it downloaded as a bundle file, so you'll need to chmod it. And once you do that, you'll need to run it as sudo or some other root user. And it's a GUI driven installer, which is interesting. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just basically agree to the license agreements and hit next. You can enter a license key, but since this is workstation player, you don't need a license key as long as you're using it for personal use. So once the installation is complete, you can close this window and you can launch it by using whatever application launcher you want. It is literally an application called VMware Player, and here it is. So when you launch it for the first time, you have to make sure that you have your kernel headers, and they have to be the kernel headers that were used to compile the kernel you're using. So if you're using a rolling release, that can be somewhat of a problem because you may not have access or they may be in a weird location. But if you do run into those problems, just Google the error and you should be able to figure it out. I'm using Ubuntu 16.4, so I have the kernel headers and everything is already installed, so everything worked right out of the box. So because VMware Workstation Player is a free application, as in you don't have to pay for it to use it, VMware likes to promote their paid software here. In this case, this is VMware Workstation Pro, the latest version, which is actually a little bit newer than VMware Workstation Player. It talks about all these things like display powerful 3D graphics using DirectX 10 and some other stuff, the funny thing is that most of these things, like DirectX 10, for example, come with VMware Workstation Player. What you can't do with VMware Workstation Player is run multiple VMs at the same time and take snapshots. So we're just gonna skip that version. And as far as the user interface goes, it's pretty similar to VirtualBox if you've used that. And if not, uh, the UI is pretty intuitive. So you can create a virtual machine, open a new one, or upgrade. So in the event that you wanna create one, Basically, all you need is an ISO file. If you do have a physical drive, then you can just plug that in, but I don't have one. So I'm going to use a Windows 10 ISO. So here's my Windows 10 ISO. VMware has detected it, which is great. It already knows what version. There's all these different versions in here. And I actually already have one installed, so I'll just go ahead and allocate some space for this one and then delete it later. 60 gigs is, if you're planning on playing games in this, 60 gigs is totally not enough. I would say probably something like 200 gigs. And at the very end, you can customize your hardware. You can also do this after it's created. What I like to do as far as hardware goes is I have four processors, so I allocate all four cores to it. I've done a few benchmark tests and I have found that virtualizing Intel VTX or AMD VI actually affords slightly better stability over performance, so I always enable this. You can play around with the preferred mode and 
disabling acceleration for binary translation, but in the test that I did, this actually hurt performance. So I just leave that on automatic. Just like in VirtualBox, you can make other changes here. You can increase the amount of memory. If you do want to use your GPU, you need to make sure that you allocate enough total memory so that you have some to spare for your GPU. So when we go down to display, you can actually set the amount of RAM available for your GPU. And then once you finish provisioning your machine, installing Windows 10 is just like installing Windows 10 on any other machine, so we're not going to cover that here. Initially, you'll probably see this pop-up that says the following software is available for download. So this is actually downloading VMware tools onto the host, so you'll need sudo to install this. But if you plan on doing anything fancy like a shared clipboard or shared folders or 3D acceleration, you have to make sure that you download this. So back at the main GUI, this is the Windows 10 machine that I just created. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna keep this, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete it. Right click, delete from disk, and that is gone. So this is the Windows 10 machine that I have, and this is the Windows 10 machine that I used in the previous video where I talked about PlanetSide and Skyrim and stuff. So the configuration I have for this guy is I've got six gigs of memory. I have 16 gigs total, but uh, six gigs is allocated to it. Two of those gigs are going to the display and that's actually the maximum amount that you can allocate. I figure the more the better. The machine came with a printer that I actually removed. You can add a whole bunch of different devices, but I removed the printer because I will never print with this. USB compatibility is 2.0. I think that that's standard. The sound card is being automatically detected. Uh, that's probably standard too. Network adapter is bridged, which means it does not get a unique IP address from your router. It's being bridged through your host. There's no real reason to change this, so I just leave it alone. My hard disk, I think that it was originally uh, 100 gigs, but I ran out of space really fast because Windows is a resource-hungry monster and games are massive, so I needed more space, and that was easy enough. There's also an options tab. There's nothing really happening in here. You can enable shared folders, but I just use Samba for the share between the two, between the host and the guest, so there's no real reason to do this. You can enable time sync. Again, there's not really any reason to do this unless you have a reason for it. And there's some other fancy stuff like VNC connections and stuff like that. And that is pretty much it as far as configuration goes. So powering on is just like booting any other machines, pretty standard for hypervisors. So we've just about made it to the Windows login screen. I have my network disabled and I actually have to enable it because I don't like Windows trying to do updates and other stupid crap when you log in and right before you log out. So if you're booting in for the very first time, the first thing that you need to do is install VMware tools. So notice how this is grayed out for me, that's because I've already installed it. So when you initially boot in, go up to the menu here and in virtual machine, it's going to say install VMware tools. I can't remember exactly the process, but basically it mounts a virtual ISO that contains everything you need to install VMware tools. And VMware tools also installs the display driver. So it's running as like a service or something right here. This is version 10.0.10 .10, and the tool service is running. So if you want to do anything like gaming, you absolutely have to install those tools because it actually simulates a display driver. So even though I'm running an NVIDIA 750 Ti, as far as the virtual machine's concerned, it is a VMware display adapter. The chip type is literally VMware Virtual SVGA 3D adapter. And the display driver is obviously, you know, VMware. But believe it or not, it supports up to DirectX version 10. Now this isn't all sunshine and butterflies because it doesn't support 10.1, which is what most games that say requires DirectX 10 require. For example, Battlefield 3 actually requires version 10.1. Overwatch also requires DirectX version 10.1. So I would think probably in the next year or so, VMware will update this so that it is DirectX 10.1 instead of DirectX 10. Another problem that you may run into if you plan on using this for gaming is that no game really recognizes the VMware display adapter. Some games will look at your display adapter and say, I don't know what that is, it's not supported, and either not let you change your graphics settings or simply not run at all. So sometimes you actually have to kind of spoof it to make it think that you're running an Nvidia or AMD card or that you have a certain amount of memory. That is pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. And yeah, thanks for watching.